just about ready to go. Getting the nod in this one, Kai Bush. And Singy, it's unique these days, but he's more of a pitch to contact type of guy. Yeah, Boogie, he doesn't rely too heavily on the strikeout. He knows he needs to miss barrels, get some soft contact, let the defense do work behind him. And I think a guy like that can keep a good tempo, don't give hitters time to adjust or think. They can move through a ball game, and you look up, they're in line for a quality start. We'll see what he's got in this one. Oh, that got him. First batter of the game is hit by the pitch. Well, it looks like he wanted that slider to finish on the inside part of the plate, not start on the inside and end up hitting the batter. It looked to me like he just tried to do a little too much with that one. So now it's Corey Seager. That one fouled off. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. Swing and a miss. Had him out front for the strikeout. Josh Smith stepping in for the Rangers. Now snap throw to first. Simeon back easily. Simeon over at first with one away. Rudder takes off. Pulled hard, but it's a foul ball. And a pitch. Fights that one away, still one and two. Slider misses outside. To first, maybe a two ball. There's one. Return throw to first, got him. Double play, and that'll do it. Nothing doing for the offense that time. Time for the White Sox to go to work. No score. the south side and our pitcher tonight John Gray well no doubt about it he's going to have to put together some consistently good performances in order to bring that ERA down now he's got good stuff he's just got to be able to have confidence trusted and really go after hitters not nibble trusted his stuff can have late life and miss barrels of bats bottom of the first at the play Corey Jolks swinging a foul over the screen and back out of play Swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Luis Robert now. That one missed. the zone and a called strike. This one popped up. He's got it, and there's two away. Time to check out the lineup for the White Sox. This is an offense, Chris, that's having a hard time scoring runs right now. Yeah, sometimes things just aren't going to click, and unfortunately what happens is guys press, they try to do a little bit more, and they get out of their game. You've got to let the game come to you. If you chase it, it's going to run from you. So this is a team that just needs to calm down, relax, and understand that they're going to come out of this. And fires in a fastball at 95. Down on strikes. Three up, three down, inning over. Shy Sox held in check here. Scoreless after one. Second inning, set to go. And now the right fielder, Adolis Garcia. He's a guy, Chris's highlights include some of the best throws from the outfield that you will ever see. Definitely one of the best arms of the sport. 
Yeah, the infielders and the catcher can never give up on a play because if this guy thinks he has a chance, he's going to throw it from the warning in, track if he has two. to. That's inside. That one the other way. That's a hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy, didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep, took the barrel right to it, and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. Here's Nathaniel Lowe at the belt and fires. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. And a pitch. And there's a base hit. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Well, that's one of those knocks where you almost expect to get some jabs from your teammates when you get back to the dugout. Just a simple soft liner in the center field for the knock right there. Maybe a little bit fooled by the pitch, but he did a good job of staying through it. And that allowed him to fight it off and just get enough behind it. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Here's Josh Young. Missed with a changeup and a count two and one. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Pitch misses. Three balls and a strike. Gary Simmons has the plate duty in this one. Well, with Simmons, it's not always your standard strike zone boog. It kind of gives a little extra in some parts of the zone and then can be tighter in others. But I think the important thing is he doesn't get labeled as inconsistent. So you got to stay ready up there. Oh, that sets up a really big at bat in this game. These are the moments when everyone in the stadium gets really locked in. So next to hit for Texas, Wyatt Lankford. The 2 1. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Squeezes it. Runners tagging from second and third. And they'll score first. It's one zip to third, not in time. And it's runners at the corners with one gone. And now the batter is Carson Kelly. It's early, but these bats can impact the game just as much as they do later. Here's a chance to set the tone early for your team. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. And another ball. And that one is lifted in the air. Fletcher under it. Makes the catch. Runner tags for home. Throw is offline and he scores. And they take a two-run lead. Sometimes all you got to do is your job and don't overcomplicate things. Keep it simple. Runner third, less than two outs. Put the ball in play and a nice job with the sack fly. Here's Leody Tavares. Swing and a pop-up. Should have this one. Makes the grab and that's the inning. But two runs for him and they jump ahead. We go to the bottom of inning number two. It's the Rangers two and the White Sox nothing. Here on the south the side, up. now it's the DH, Andrew Vaughn. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away and you've got to produce at the big league level. And a 3-1 on the way. And that's nope. too high, ball oh. four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Gavin Sheets steps to the plate for the White Sox. And there's a strike. Spoils a two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Oh. 
That one just misses. Ball two. Looks like he thinks that should have been a strike at the top of the zone, but doesn't seem to be too upset. That's just a case where I think he's trying to get a better feel for the umpire's strike zone and what he's going to be calling. That's just a part of pitching. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Here's Corey Lee. And the pitch. In the air out to center. He makes the grab. And there's two down. Oh, he throws it away. That is the third baseman. Miguel Vargas steps to the plate for the White Sox. Swings and misses. One yeah, the ball. count one and two. two I think he was sitting off speed there. Swing and a pop-up. In position. Brings it in for the third out. So one left for the White Sox, and they're down 2 nothing. And we're back we out of the third the inning. Now it's the second, the second baseman, Marcus Simeon. Marcus. Simeon. Slice to right. Fair ball. Now he turns and heads for second. The throw in. But he's in there easily. Well, patience and discipline paid off right there as he got into an advantage count. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer and he hit the ball on the screws. Corey Seager now the Dodgers made him a first round pick back in 2012 18th overall that year for Seager Boog and Carlos Correa Byron Buxton Marcus Stroman just a few other first rounders from that class. I'd say pretty solid group. The pitch. Swings and misses, struck him out. Nice, doubled up with the slider for that punch out. But one before just caught the zone. So as a hitter, you have to protect right there. Great pitch to just expand a little bit more. He got that chase he was looking for. That right there is good pitching. Josh Smith stepping in for the Rangers. Man at second. Up the middle. Sends it over to Sheets. Awesome play there. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Next to bat will be the Texas cleanup hitter, Adolis Garcia. The 1 1. Fouled off. He was late. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now. Doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep right because there. teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. That one called just inside, I think, and on the mound, he's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. 2-2. Two -two. And Wait, another dude. ball. Nathaniel Lowe waiting to hit for the Rangers. Three and two now. To the right side. Sosa. Gets it to first. And Garcia is out. And the inning is over. Rangers lead one. But they're on top two nothing. Guaranteed rate field ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now here is Dominic Fletcher. And the righty deals. Pitch misses there, and it's two and one.
Oh, and it delivers out. outside. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with a 3-1 count. Kicks and fires. Foul ball there. And here it comes. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Pulled the string on the changeup. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically likes to shoot the ball the other way. But that time, a little anxious. So digging in, Brooks Baldwin. One down, base is empty. That one at 95 missed up top. And the count is two and two. Swing and a miss struck him out. Now batting left back to the top of the White Sox lineup. Corey Jolts steps to the plate for the White Sox. The pitch. No, that's low. That's in there, and that is strike two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Two out spaces empty. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Grounds one to the right side. Oh, great stop. And that's a nice play to end the inning. Excellent stop right there. He wants to take it himself. Waves the pitcher off and continues to run into the dugout. As we go to the top of the fourth, Nathaniel Lowe up to hit. Nathaniel Lowe. The lefty fires. Headed down the line. Fletcher settles under it and makes the catch. And a quick out, number one. The third baseman, number six. Josh, Josh Young, the next to hit. Next offering is down low. That one back up the middle and it gets through. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side and the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Man at first with one gone. Wyatt Lankford stepping in for the Rangers. And the pitch. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Two gone now. And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance, get him out of there, and deal with the next guy. And here's the catcher, Carson Kelly. Two outs. Swing and a miss. One ball, two straight. And a ball and two strikes. Got him swinging. One left for Texas as they're unable to add to their 2 nothing lead.
And welcome back to the ballpark. John Chambi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Luis Robert. The line to kick the pitch. You know, these White Sox, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. They're chasing a lot of pitches outside the zone, and those chases that are turning into a bunch of outs. Can they turn that around and stay within the zone? We'll see, but I think they have to. Goes down, swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Came inside with that two-strike fastball nicely and just bunched him up on the inside part of the plate. could get around on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. Fought off foul. That's Misses. It's two and two. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Swings and misses at the pitch off the plate. Gets to it on the first. Out on the drop third strike. Two gone. Just absolutely rolling on the mound. He's looking very much on his game in the early parts of this one, Boog. Fully on the attack with these hitters. That's seven strikeouts already. So he's got a good pace going, no doubt. Andrew Vaughn now. This one in the air center field. Tavares settles under it. He's got it, and that'll do it. Back here on the south side, new inning getting started. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Laoti Tavares. Pitch misses there. Now two balls and a strike. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Jonathan Cannon preparing to come on if needed. Crochet warming up as well. The 2 1. And it finds its way through for a hit. And the leadoff man aboard. Everything came together for him. I really like that swing, man. He didn't just push it the other way through the infield. He drove it that way, and it kind of makes me think he was thinking opposite field as he stepped into the box, got a pitch he liked, and he got it done. Here is Marcus Simeon. Next offering is in for a strike. Tavares gets his lead at first with nobody out. That misses, and the count is even two and two. Okay. Squirts away a little bit to second, but way too late, safe there. So a wild pitch allows the runner to advance. Definitely trying to work down and get that double play ball, but it got away enough to erase any chance of that. Good job of moving up in the scoring position. Now a hit could make that wild pitch really sting. Man at second. And ball four to a board. And here's Corey Seeger to hit. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. And that should be extra bases. One run is in. Coming around third is Simeon. Fires the second too late into second with a double. And that was hard hit. White Sox manager is out of the dugout and will make a move to the pen. Kai Bush is done, and he had a tough time keeping them in the ball game today. We'll get a new arm when we come back. 
New pitcher for the White Sox, Garrett Crochet. Still pretty early in the ball game, so this bullpen has some work ahead of him. Best case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that starter left for him. Next is the designated hitter, Josh Smith. 2 1 now. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Still two and two after the foul ball. The pitch. Got him looking for the strikeout. Fastball at the letters, frozen for strike three. Now here is Adolis Garcia. Adolis Garcia. The 2 1. Aye. And that's down and away. The kick, the 3 2 to the right side. Whips it to first. And Garcia is out. Now that the first baseman. Nathaniel and now the first baseman, Lowe. Nathaniel Lowe. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. Two outs and a runner at third. And we're at the top of the fifth. Next offering is in for a strike. Two outs. And a swing and a miss. Inning over, and it could have been worse. But they'll pick up a couple runs here, both coming on this two-run double. It's now a 4 nothing ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. And we're back. And here is Gavin Sheets. Left-hand batter waits. On its way to the corner, Lankford on the move. Can't get there. This one lands foul. The wind and the pitch. The punch out there, and that's the first out. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the, the same batter. page right now. The catcher. Now the catcher Corey. up to hit, Corey Lee. One down, base is empty. Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. That was blasted to the moon. And they cut into the lead. It's 4-1. This game just got a little more interesting with that home run. Well, I'm not really sure how he kept that fair. When you're out in front on a breaking ball like that, such a good chance that it's going to hook foul. But not this time. He kept the hands moving forward just long enough to sneak it inside that foul pole. One out, base is empty. Now the third baseman, Miguel Vargas. And another ball. Swing and a line drive curling foul down the right side. Here's the 2-2. Good job to fight that one off. Here's a 2-2. Grounded to low. 
And he handles oh. it himself for the out. The right fielder, number seven, Dominic Fletcher. Now it's the right fielder, Dominic Fletcher. Two down, nobody on. Fastball for a strike. Right side. And that chance handled. Over to first. And that is the inning. But not before they're able to draw closer with this blast. It's now a 4-1 ball game. Major League Baseball is on the show. Here on the south side, here's the third baseman, Josh Young. The line of the pitch. Swings and misses. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. Next up for Texas, Wyatt Lankford. Wyatt. Base is empty one away, and we're at the top half of the sixth. Right, right through there for a strike. Goodness, I think he just took the best pitch he's going to see in this at bat. You don't get many like that in that location. I don't know if you take that pitch against any pitcher out there on the mound. One down, base is empty. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes, two away. Up next for the Rangers, Carson Kelly. Carson Kelly. Two outs. Yeah. Swings through that one. Filthy changeup right there. Just pulled the string. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Rangers go down in order. Three up, three down for him there. Nine, one, and two scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. It's the Rangers four and the White Sox one. Bottom of the inning. Now, Brooks Baldwin. The shortstop. Baldwin. And that's a little bit high. You know, these White Sox just lacking discipline at the plate in this ballgame. Chasing pitches has been a big part of the story. We've seen it quite a bit today. It's been tough for them to make contact at times, and it just doesn't look like they're seeing it very well as a group. The other way, and it stays fair. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. Throw is offline, and he's got a double. That was a thing of beauty. He may have been a little behind the pitch, but by getting that barrel into the hitting zone early on in his swing, he was able to meet it and still shoot a line drive down the line and left. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. John Gray won't go any further, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. Taking over on the mound for the Rangers, Matt Vesta. And this is an important part of this game. Tight score and still a lot of outs to get. So they're looking for a big outing out of them right here to get some critical outs. So up next, Corey Jolts. Man at second. Swing and a miss as he was late. And on the mound, you know confidence has to be pretty high with all of the swings and misses. He's had him eaten out of the palm of his hand pretty much all game. Kicks and deals. Got him. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout, and there's one away. Well, that slider was way out of the zone, and for me, it just comes down to not seeing the pitch out of the hand, not tracking it into the zone, and then also being a little bit anxious, not confident in your two-strike approach. And so when a guy's in that position, you get him to commit early, and a lot of times you get the swing and miss, as you did right there. And now it's Luis Robert. Outside low, and it's 2-1.
One out and a runner at second here in the bottom of the sixth. Swing and a miss. Chased it out of the zone. Double-barreled action in the bullpen. Andrew Heaney, the veteran southpaw, is getting ready to come on if needed. Bradford getting loose as well. Here comes a pitch. That one not close. And the count's full. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with the three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Right-handed reliever battling here as he fouls it away. The pitch. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. That leaves him without a throw, and they don't get the out. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. That's one of those you classify as just too hot to handle. Hit it on the screws, and it couldn't be fielded cleanly, but you can't really blame the defense in that case. And here is Sosa to the plate. Swinging it much better this season in away games than here at home. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. And another ball. Andrew Vaughn up next for the White Sox. Payoff pitch, and he walked him. Got a great back and forth in that at bat. He had to play off some really close pitches, and somehow, though, he found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Andrew Vaughn steps to the plate for the White Sox. His July and August splits there. Baldwin on third. Robert over at second. Sosa over at first. So going away. Next one is off the play. Two and one. Look, in situations like these, the air can get really thin up there at the plate. Got to find a way to breathe and slow everything down. And he deals. Just missed. Get ready for some action here. Good RBI guy at the plate. Runners in scoring position. And a hitter's count. High fly ball out to center field. Makes the grab. Runner tags from third. Play at the plate. Not in time. He's safe. 4-2 now. Well, he'll take the sack fly on the mound right there. Base is loaded. I mean, this is a high leverage situation. And if you can limit the other team, you're doing pretty good work. See if he can get this next out. So first and second with two outs. And now it's going to be Gavin Sheets. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, but I'm not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at-bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. Fastball for a strike. And just misses with that one. So both runners should be on the move here on the full count pitch. Yeah, this is a good chance to tie up this ball game. See if he can find some open grass in the outfield. Strike three. Got him swinging. And that'll keep more runs from coming in. Inning over. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Top of inning number seven. Now it's going to be Leody Tavares. Leody Tavares. And a pitch. In the air, right side. And just now. The 
wide the kick in the one two. Now a screamer into the outfield. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. One up, one down. So the Rangers batting order turns over. Now it's Marcus Simeon. One down, base is empty. Pitch misses, and that's ball two. And it's fouled away. The pitch. That count is full. Inside ball four. Oh, you know this guy wants to swing it, but he's showing some good patience in this one. It's the second time he's taken ball four. So, man aboard, Corey Seager stepping in for the Rangers. And now the lefty found back our way, and that's out of play. Here's a one-two. Fouls it back with two strikes. Man at first, one away. Swings, throw it in, that's a strikeout. Boyd gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate. So very difficult to get the ball out. Late that time, and it's strike two. And another ball. That one misses. Counts full three and two. Adolis Garcia up next. Two outs. This one in the air right field. Fletcher settles underneath it. And he makes the catch. And that is that. So no runs on no hits, no errors, and one left on. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Rangers four and the White Sox two. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Andrew Heaney. Coming on to face a righty here, and he's been fantastic against him this year. His numbers in those matchups are very good. Here's the catcher, Corey Lee. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. That one just misses. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. So digging in, Miguel Vargas. Fouls one off. Two and two. One out, base is empty. And now it's filled up. And that one off the inside edge. You walked him. 
It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Tying run at the plate. Comes up empty. That's strike two. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. That one almost got him. Straighten him up a little bit. The tying run at the plate. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, that's the money maker right there. Two strikes, slider down and away from the same side thrower as the hitter. I mean, it's just tough. You're looking to protect with two strikes and very difficult to lay off. And next to hit for the Sox, Brooks Baldwin. Swings and misses. And it's one and two. Two strikes. And down on strikes he goes, and that ends the inning. The White Sox leave one. They trail it here, four to two. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Angel De Los Santos. And something to be aware of, the long ball has been a little bit of a problem for him this year. Adolis Garcia stepping in for the Rangers. Adolis Garcia. And the right hander deals. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And another ball. Three two now. And yeah, there's ball four. Man at first. And now Nathaniel Lowe. Garcia aboard here at first with nobody out. That one's in there. That is strike two. Action in the pen down there. Jonathan Cannon getting loose out there. Number 60 getting cranked up as well. Inside and it hit him. He had him one two and he ends up hitting him with a pitch. Josh Young stepping in for the Rangers. No outs, runners at first and second. You can see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. Righty delivers. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Two two now. Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. So up next, Wyatt Langford. pitch nope at the ball it's getting squeezed a little bit here late that misses 
And now three and one. This is a really good feeling for a hitter at this point in the ball game. You know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. And that'll load the bases. Oh, this is their chance to break it open. If they don't end up winning this ball game, they're going to look back at this opportunity right here and have some regret. Now the catcher up to hit, Carson Kelly. And another ball in the infield at the corners. Don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Swung on, belted. That one back there. And caught on the warning track. Runners tag up from second and third. He'll score on the sack fly. They lead by three. 5-2. They had a chance to add to their lead right there, and they did with the sack fly. Nice job of getting it done. Really good execution with that at bat. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Laoti Tavares. Well, bottom of the order here, Boog. you got to go right after this guy. As they look to pick up an add-on run, and the number nine guy at the plate. Fastball for a strike. Well, if he's going to steal second, you want him to go early in the count. That way he's not a distraction to the hitter at the plate. Go ahead and get it out of the way so the hitter can focus on the pitch. At the belt and fires. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. In comes the run from third to add on. It's 6-2. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Jonathan Cannon gets the call from the pen. He doesn't get a lot of strikeouts compared to other relievers, so he relies on getting that soft contact and the defense doing work behind him. They'll have to be on their toes with him on the ball. Back to the top of the lineup, Marcus Simeon will hit next. Right-hander kicks, deals. Tosses to first. They limit the damage here. So two runs, only one hit, no errors, but two are left stranded. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Rangers six and the White Sox two. Bottom of the eighth. Now the left fielder, Corey Jolts. And now one and two. Look, it looks like that curveball backed up on him. And although it's a mistake, it works out really good for the pitcher. The hitters timed it up, expects it to be to a certain spot, and it just doesn't get there. And a curve is down and in. Well, he might have to look for a different put-away pitch right here, too, too. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at-bat, so might have it timed up and ready for it. Next one off the plate inside, and the count's full. Activity in the bullpen. Andrew Chafin appears to be getting loose. Here comes a 3-2. Stays alive. High fly ball out to left field. Lankford pulls that one down, and there's one down. Now So up next for Chicago, Luis Robert. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Base is empty, one away. Here, the bottom half of the eighth inning. And another ball. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. That clips the corner. 
Boog, and the one thing about that yeah. is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. Two outs, base is empty. And up next for Chicago, Lennon Sosa. In the air to left down the line. Nobody can get there, and it's a foul ball. That one the other way. Simeon fires over to first. Inning over. Down in order go the White Sox. They still trail it here. It's six to two. All set to start the ninth in this one. Seeger stands in now. Ball to strike. The pitch. In the air, right field. Fletcher settles under it. Makes the grab one away. Now that designated hitter, Josh. So now the DH spot, Josh Smith. And a 2-1 on the way. Baldwin on the run, sends it over to first. Now two away. Oh, he had to make the perfect play up the middle, be able to square himself up with the shoulders enough to be able to make a strong, accurate throw to first, and I thought that was an infield hit all the way. Adolis Garcia stepping in for the Rangers. On the ground to third. Sends it over to Sheets, and that is that. Rangers go down quickly there. They lead it 6-2. to two. New pitcher on here, Cody Bradford. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. So now it's the four hole hitter, Andrew Vaughn. The designated hitter, Andrew Vaughn. And a pitch. And a foul ball. The lefty fires. And that's in the dirt. Next pitch misses way outside. And here it comes. That one misses. So a lead off walk. Leading off for the so, man aboard, the first and here's the first baseman, Gavin Sheets. Well, the leadoff man gets on. You want to minimize the threat by playing sound defense. Hopefully, the pitcher can get a ball on the ground, and they can roll him up for two. And a pitch. Two balls, two strikes. The Rangers leading by four. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. And they'll do it again. Left hand batter waits. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. That's towards center. Tavares racing over to make the catch. Now that, 
the catcher. Corey Lee. Corey Lee steps to the plate for the White Sox. 